Captain Korska of the 172nd Vostroyan Mechanized looked out at the tide of green-skinned foes with despair in his heart. Less than 500 Imperial warriors were left standing, and only a dozen operational vehicles, against a never-ending horde of ramshackle orc vehicles, orcs yelling and bellowing as they advanced over the red sands on the world of Talros V. His warriors were the last survivors of Hive Mithrax, running as the orcs overwhelmed the last of the Imperial defences. As the last of remaining Imperial officer, Corsica decided to stop running some 80 miles from the Hive, now just a smoking dot in the distance. Corsica rallied his units for one final battle against the Greenskins. The remaining infantry took up positions on a nearby ridge line, while the last of the Imperial armor prepared to charge out and meet the Orcs in a head-on battle. Captain Corsica looked out at the horde of foes from the cupola of his Lehman Russ Vanquisher, nicknamed Blackfire, before looking across at the only other Lehman Russ in his small force, a Lehman Russ demolisher named Unbound Hatred. Corsica raised his arm up, and two Lehman Russ, four Hellhounds, and eight Chimeras charged forth into battle against the Orcs for one last time. Corsica ducked back down into the hull of his tank, bolting the top hatch before addressing his crew. All right, Orishi, time to get stuck in. Let's hope Barracule is a better shot with that last cannon than Archu, laughed Marcus inside the tank. <laughs> My money is on 20 to 1 kills this fight, joked Parakeel. For the Emperor, the crew spoke in response. The two armoured forces sped towards each other. The orcs began firing with rockets, crude cannons and endless small arms wildly towards the Imperial forces as they advanced. None of the shots were aimed, just a typical display of orc intimidation and ammunition wasting. Harris, the gunner of the Lehman Russ Vanquisher, aimed his gun forward and then rumbled as the tank fired a shell. It hammered dead center into a looted Lehman Russ, but the tank kept advancing. Curse Xenos, have another! spoke Harris again as he loaded another shell and fired. The second shot gutted the captured Lehman Russ, stopping as it burned. Good shot, Harris. That is the first one of the day. First of many, I hope, laughed Marcus. The Lehman Russ kept rumbling forward. Soon as it came close enough to the tank, Corsica called out to his crew. Who gunners, spawns and gunners, fire at will. Harris, targets of opportunity, fire at will. The hull last cannon ejected a bright lance of light and struck a crude orc war vehicle, punching a neat hole in it, while a small orc buggy was smashed apart by a vanquisher round. Harris, don't worry the small targets, target their heavy armor. Corsica checked the tactical display and watched as the first Imperial vehicle, a Chimera, detonated under an enemy rocket and vanished from the tactical display. Looking up again, he watched as a crater appeared in the black sand nearby, as the demolisher fired around short, not striking any targets. A Hellhound detonated and took another Chimera with it, as a large caliber cannon round from an Orc battle wagon struck the Hellhound's fuel tanks. Harris didn't answer Corsica, he just swung the turret around and fired around. Corsica watched out the viewport as the turret of the battle wagon exploded. The vehicle kept moving forward, but its main gun was ruined. Harris, what was that? laughed Tokatu from the heavy bolter monsoon. It's still alive! Shut it, Kataku! yelled Harris as he moved the turret around and fired again at what looked like a looted Adeptus Astartes vehicle. The vehicle detonated under the Vanquisher's round. Now they were in range, the sponsoring heavy bolters all across the line opened up, in addition to the multi-lasers of the Chimeras striking any exposed orcs on their vehicles. A gaggle of orc bikers riding ahead of the orc force vanished as the demolisher round turned the bikers into shrapnel and body parts. The orcs were now in small arms range, and rockets, shells, and bullets thundered towards the Imperial forces, ricocheting off the frontal armor of the Imperial tanks. Keep firing, Tovarishi. We'll have them on the run soon. Ain't like you to lie, Captain, called Marcus. Shut it, Marcus. Didn't ask you. He was right, though. According to the Auspec, nearly a hundred enemy vehicles were approaching them. The Imperial force was doomed, but Corsica knew that from the moment the hive fell. 
As if to emphasize his point, a rocket hammered into the hell, ripping out a chunk of frontal armor on Blackfire. Throne, that was a close one, cursed Barakiel. The tank was a fire of noise and shouting, as their words were barely heard inside the tank between the hail of enemy fire on the hull and the response of the Imperial guns inside Blackfire. Another Chimera died outside, as the Orcs, now visible without binoculars, a green tide of hatred and aggression began firing everything they had. A cannon round from somewhere struck Blackfire, blowing off the left track and hammered the left monsoon. Takatu screamed as shrapnel hit him in the face, cutting him open and knocking him back down into the tank dead. Korska knew that the tank was no longer mobile and death was close for them all. For the Emperor! Harris chanted a prayer to the Emperor for mercy and deliverance as he fired the Vanquisher cannon again. As if seemingly in answer to Harris's prayer, the tide of orcs in front of them were hammered by fire from above. Rockets shelled and laser fire from above smashed into the orcs. The orcs reeled from the attack and looked up and started firing wildly into the air. Corsica opened the top hatch, no longer caring about enemy fire or death, and saw several gunships flying over the battle. It took him a moment to realize who they belonged to. Huh. Astartes. Found a hawk gunships and one gunship of a large design and an unknown sea gree colour, unfamiliar to Korska, flew low, blasting the orcs with heavy ordnance, before hovering as space marines dropped out from the hatches, battling with the surviving orcs in the black sands with bolters and blades. A hulking orc the size of a sentinel walker and nearly as broad stepped out from the fires of its destroyed vehicle and advanced upon the space marines. A displacement of air in front of the monstrous orc halted it in its tracks as a teleport flare appeared in front of them. Six hulking warriors in what Corsica remembered was called Terminator armor appeared from the teleport flare. Five of them engaged the orc war boss's bodyguards, while one Terminator with a banner fixed on his back and a sword in hand battled the orc war boss one on one. Two more teleport flares appeared nearby. Eleven warriors, not in sea green, but in red, appeared, firing bolters, their rounds ablaze with light. The second flare revealed a hulking machine, taller than a sentinel and twice as broad. Clad in midnight blue, it began smashing the orcs into paste with an oversized fist. The remaining crew of black fire looked out of the hatches in awe at the sight before them. But something was wrong with these space marines. Corsica knew it. He could feel it. Looking out with his magnoculars, he could see why. Many of the space marines were decorated with skulls and savage world totems, and crude pink leather cloaks. Corsica had heard of savage world space marines before, but seeing them in person made him feel uneasy, and he was glad they were on his side, although this the sight of them felt wrong. Looking back to the duel in the center of the inferno, Corsica watched as the warrior in sea green slashed up with a blade, cutting a gouge in the orc's face. The orc swung out with a hulking axe, glancing off the pauldron of the space marine. A handful of shells fired from the storm bolter of another warrior, terminator with a hulking axe and a storm bolter, distracted the orc long enough to turn around. It turned around to face this new attacker, and then the orc buckled and fell forward. A glowing glob of molten light melted the orc's leg as it burned through armor and flesh, dissolving its leg into a bubbling mass as the orc toppled down. Looking out, the first warrior stepped out from behind the orc. The Terminator walked forward and rammed his sword into the orc's head. Moments later, the severed head of the orc came free and fell forward onto the ground. As soon as the orc warboss fell and the last of the orcs were defeated, the gunships returned and the space marines boarded with quick, precise discipline. Then, in a flash of light, the Terminators vanished and disappeared. Soon the battlefield was quiet and still except for the sound of burning vehicles in the distance. In their wake, the Space Marines left behind a banner, a tattered piece of white cloth, a crude eye and the number 16 painted on it in red paint. Or at least, Corsica assumed it was paint. Harris sighed and spoke to the crew. The Emperor protects. Corsica was uneasy by his recent experience. Those space marines, that banner, it all just felt wrong. Yes, it seems he did. 
was the only reply Corsica 